All right, here we go. New Scribble Kibble episode. The difference between good animation and great animation is composition. The Legend of Pippi. I wonder if it's Pippi or Pie Pie. Pippi? I'm gonna say Pippi. The Legend of Pippi is a fun, short animation with compositions we can look at to learn basics, some neat tricks, and a bit of advanced psychological stuff behind why art is organized on screen in a certain way. And a link to watch Legend of Pippi is in the description. A composition is a little weird because it's not something I'd necessarily teach to a beginner, but the sooner a person knows what it is, the better off they're going to be in literally anything art related. If this is the first time you're hearing the term composition, all it means is how things are arranged. For example, let's say you have a room full of items. Composition is the way those items are organized. Is the room messy? Clean? Is it empty? Is there something unusual over there in the corner? Or is it right in your face? Do we see the room from here or here? Each option tells a completely different story. Even the emotions we feel depend on composition. If I serve you spaghetti and it looks like this, you're gonna feel really different than if I serve it to you like this. Animation makes composition exponentially more difficult because not only are things on screen moving and changing shape and size, but somehow each shot's viewpoint has to string together with the others in a way that your brain can understand. The Scribble Kibble episode on Comey Can't Communicate gives more detail about this, when and why to pick different camera positions. That episode is about framing, this episode is about the contents inside the frame. So, let's dig into examples. The easiest composition to make is plain old front and center. We're supposed to focus on Pippi, so Pippi goes smack in the middle of the frame. All of the background elements either draw the eye to the center, or are simple enough to not be distracting. Even this single drawing shows what I mean when I say composition separates good animation from great. This shot could easily have used a flat perspective to pan down from Pippi's dream, but instead, the background is cleverly crafted to place the dream on the ceiling among legends, and the pillars vanish at an angle that follows Pippi's heroic sword pose. This is the type of visual kick that you're not going to get from something that is only good. Here are more examples of centered composition in this animation. Some of them are straightforward, others have nuance like a foreground element, a camera angle, or a typical camera movement. Notice how in animation you can start with one type of composition and fluidly move to another. A composition like this fits a guideline called rule of thirds. Rule of thirds is a grid of four lines. The intersections are where the image's most important subject goes. It doesn't have to be exact, just close. In the case of this dragon, the golden spiral composition guide might also be used. If the spiral overlay clicks with you, feel free to design with it in mind, but I've always found that the rule of thirds is way easier to understand. Just put stuff closer to a corner. The composition rule of thirds is also useful for balancing characters towards one edge of the screen or the other. You'll recognize it when you see a shot where the character is closer to one side of the screen and the rest of it is background. Or if there are multiple characters, one will dominate one third of the screen while the others will be on the opposite side. Look at how the monster pushes into Pippi's territory, how all of the elements shove toward Pippi's lower third of the screen. The animators are using composition to make this undead minotaur a big pushy jerk. Third's compositions are extremely versatile. You'll see them everywhere once you begin looking. Besides center and third's compositions, we have literally everything else. <laughs> There are so many rules and possibilities. You can look up all kinds of guidelines to follow like symmetry or leading lines to a focal point or golden triangles, golden ratios. But if you only remember one thing about this video, let it be this. Composition can be whatever you want it to be. None of these rules are required. The rules are just tools to help you make good composition. If you use the rule of thirds, are you likely to get something that looks nice? Yes, but you don't have to. 
Remember, the goal of composition is to create story and feeling. For every scene, there are countless ways to compose it. You have to develop your own instinct for what works. One way to do this is to pay attention to movies and animations that you like and notice how they set stuff up. Look at this long pan down shot showing off Cat Kingdom with all the characters living their lives, all these angular downward streets, complex shapes to break up any monotony. Is a composition guide going to show you how to do that? No. The second way to strengthen your composition choices is to know some things about human psychology. Let's go back to the Minotaur sequence. Notice how often the camera looks up at the Minotaur, how often it looks down on Pippi. There's science behind this. An upward angled viewpoint makes the viewer feel small. A downward angled viewpoint literally looks down on a character, and now the character is weak and the viewer is strong. And of course, context matters. Sometimes camera angles are for visual diversity only, and it's possible to flip the script and look down into hell. But there's a psychological power structure behind how we see things. Most often, we look up at strength and down at weakness. So when a character wins their place or overcomes a trial, usually we're gonna find ourselves going from looking down to looking up at them. Another weird brain thing animators should be aware of is the fact most audiences see progress as moving from left to right. Every single part of Pippi's journey moves to the right. Think about how odd it would feel if Pippi were traveling towards the left side of the screen the whole time. Like playing classic Sonic running to the left, or a comparison image with the future shown on the left, a graph with the y-axis on the right. It's just a little weird. In animation, it's common for composition to support left to right anytime there's a journey, progress, or travel towards a goal. Moving the opposite way can be an indication of a character failing something. They're running away, they're leaving. Again, journey composition that favors left to right is not always the case. The physical setting, consistency between shots, and adding variety might cause composition to face the opposite direction. Also, and this is the interesting point, if your native language reads right to left, the feeling of progress will move that direction. Whew, man, the video is already this long and this is all I managed to cover about composition? <laughs> well, I guess it's a start. We didn't even touch on overlap, or using sidebars to tell a story inside a story, or composition meant to create fear. Well, maybe next time, I guess. You can see all of the episodes about composition on scribblekipple.com slash episodes, click on the composition topic, and they'll pop up. Also, I added a new feature for supporters where you can post a message into a video like so. You can pick that ability up on my Ko-fi shop, or as a member benefit on Ko-fi or Patreon. Woo! <laughs>